If your skin is constantly itchy, red, flaky, or flaring for no obvious reason, then this video is for you. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Alexandra Brown. I'm a board certified dermatologist. Today we're gonna talk about something that I treat in my clinic every single day, and that's eczema. We're gonna go through what eczema actually is, the different types, how do you diagnose it, and all the treatments that genuinely work. So let's get into it. Eczema, or a general term could be dermatitis, is an inflammatory skin condition where the skin barrier becomes weakened, and when the barrier is not functioning properly, irritants and allergens and microbes can get in more easily, which can then trigger inflammation and itch. Eczema's chronic condition. It comes and goes, and it's absolutely not contagious. It also has nothing to do with cleanliness or how dry your skin is. It's a combination of genetics, immune system overactivity, and environmental triggers. So what are some of the causes of eczema? There are a few main reasons eczema develops, and most people have more than one of those happening at the same time for the eczema to really hit the right spots and flare. Number one is genetics. 100%, many people with eczema have mutations in what's called filaggrin gene, which weakens the skin barrier and makes the skin naturally dry and sensitive. The next is immune system overreaction. Eczema is driven by an overreactive immune response, especially along the Th2 inflammatory pathway. This is why a lot of the treatments often target this specific pathway. The next reason is the environmental triggers. Weather changes, cold air, dry air, heat, sweat, detergents, fragrances, cleaning chemicals, and even stress can all trigger flares. And also patients with eczema are more prone to infections because that skin barrier is compromised and from scratching and exaggerated immune response, eczema is more likely to get infected, which can create even bigger inflammatory response and cause the eczema to spread on larger parts of the body. There are several different types of eczema. It doesn't look the same on everyone, and the type you have definitely affects the treatments. These are the types that I diagnose the most often in kids and adults. Number one, and this one's probably maybe the most common, but that's atopic dermatitis, or at least it's what most of us think of when we say eczema. Atopic dermatitis is probably the most common form. I certainly see it a lot in my clinic. It causes dry, red, itchy patches that kind of come and go it often starts in childhood and it's linked to asthma and allergies. We call this the perfect triad in dermatology. The asthma, allergies, eczema all tend to run together. Those patients tend to also have keratosis pilaris. They tend to have dark circles around their eyes and things like that. The next type of eczema is contact dermatitis. This is very common. And to me, these kind of go hand in hand. Contact dermatitis happens when something directly irritates the skin or triggers an allergic reaction. The irritant types come from things like soaps, detergents, and repeated washing, but there's also an allergic type that comes from ingredients like fragrances, nickel, preservatives, adhesives, nail products, or even hair dye. And for the allergic type, patch testing is often needed to pinpoint exactly what you're allergic to. The next type of eczema is dyshydrotic eczema. These are those tiny little really itchy blisters on the sides of your fingers and palms. We call them tapioca blisters because they look like the tapioca pudding. These can flare with seasonal changes, sweat, stress. Um, I actually often find that my patients say that they flare in June. So summer for some people is a trigger, even though for atopic dermatitis, I find that winter happens to be main environmental trigger for most of my patients. They're completely different when it comes to that. And this, that part actually is just a personal observation from my 15 years of treating patients with this. The next step of eczema that's extremely common is numular. Numular means coin or round-like. These patches are typically present on the lower legs, but they can be anywhere in the body. They can be itchy, but they're not often itchy. And most of the time they're mistaken for ringworm. The next step of eczema is seborrheic dermatitis. This affects the scalp, eyebrows, sides of the nose, and beard area. It shows up as these flaky red patches that are caused by inflammation to yeast that's normally present on the skin. And the last step of eczema we need to talk about is the hand eczema. This is extremely common in anyone who washes their hands frequently or works in water or chemicals. It causes cracks, burning, and thick patches. So how do dermatologists actually diagnose eczema? The diagnosis is usually based on what the rash looks like, where it's on the body, your history plays a huge role, and what are your trigger factors. If we suspect a true allergic reaction, we're going to do patch testing to identify specific allergens. 
of note, if we think you have contact dermatitis, it's important to separate the difference between irritant and allergic contact dermatitis. Irritant contact dermatitis means you are sensitive to whatever you used and you use too much of it. So if you use less, you might not have that reaction. This is typically burning on the skin. That's the most common symptom I hear. But if you have true allergic reaction, that means you're actually allergic to an active ingredient in there. So using even the smallest amount will cause a severe reaction. This typically presents as very itchy. So if you used your benzoyl peroxide wash or I don't know, your tretinoin and your skin is burning, maybe you just used too much. But if you use something and you're intensely itchy, you are definitely allergic. That's just one pro tip from seeing patients with this for years. Now, other things we want to think about besides like true allergic reactions and, and stuff like that are psoriasis, uh, fungal infections, autoimmune conditions, if rash is really unusual or if it has unusual pattern. For example, psoriasis loves to show up on the elbows, knees, scalp, belly button, genitalia, or even the ears. Um, eczema doesn't love those same spots. Rash that flares in the sun is not psoriasis, it's probably lupus. So there's so much that goes into history as far as when you let rash flares, what environmental factor or maybe personal factor flares it, along with what does it look like at presentation. So let's say you have eczema or you've been watching this and you've diagnosed yourself with eczema. What triggers eczema flares and what do you need to avoid? Eczema is heavily influenced by environmental triggers and identifying them is going to be one of the most important steps in, in managing your flares. Common irritants include things like, and I'm about to list a long list, so brace yourself here, harsh soaps, anything stripping your barrier, hot water, yeah, hand sanitizers, cleaning products, fragrance in anything, not just your skincare products, but fragrance in your laundry detergent, uh, fabrics like rough or any wool fabrics, cold weather can be a stressor, um, any mental stress, whether from moving jobs, uh, school, or even stress from an illness. And don't forget your laundry detergent, you guys, skincare starts in the laundry. That is so important. And I'm going to be honest with you on the laundry detergent. I come from a family that used softener and dryer sheets and needed clothing to smell well. And then I married my husband who has eczema and it was like absolute no-go. And I tried to cheat with the Tide and all the other good smelly things. And every time I do, he flares. His eczema flares and it's absolutely a no-go. Could I do his laundry in a separate laundry detergent? Probably. Am I gonna? Not a chance. So the whole household has switched to fragrance-free laundry detergent. This is a huge eczema trigger in my patients anywhere from newborn up to patients in their 90s. And just because something is marked for babies doesn't mean it's better. There are brands that are marked for babies, but they have fragrance. So I would really focus on looking for fragrance-free laundry detergent. Even, this is so important, even clean or whatever clean is or plant-based formulas can often have fragrances or preservatives that are going to irritate eczema-prone skin. So it's just because something is plant-based or natural or clean, if it has a fragrance and you have eczema, I would stay away from it. So my number one recommendation in treating eczema is step one, switch your detergent and all your laundry care to fragrance free. My top choices here and what we use in my family, we kind of alternate all free and clear, tide free and gentle. And then recently we've used the Blue Land fragrance free version. This one change alone can calm down chronic flares for a lot of people, especially like my husband. And if you're somebody who uses dryer sheets, a bounce makes the ones in the white box, they're completely fragrance free. Or alternatively, you can use those little balls that help take out the static without any conditioner. Let's focus on the treatments for eczema. Treatment really depends on severity, but the core goals are gonna stay the same. You wanna calm down the inflammation, you wanna restore the skin barrier, and you wanna try and prevent new flares. So step one is gonna be repair the skin barrier. This is the foundation of every eczema treatment plan. You want thick, fragrance-free moisturizers with ceramides, petrolatum, glycerin, shea butter, or even colloidal oatmeal to help rebuild the barrier. You always wanna look for a cream, not a lotion. There's a difference between the two. Also, the best time to apply these is right after bathing. You wanna moisturize when the skin is still damp so you can help lock in the hydration. Your step two is gonna to be to calm down inflammation. And yes, we use topical steroids. They're the most effective way to quickly bring down the redness and itch. And I know there's a lot of hate on social media over steroids right now, but in pinch, 
These, if used correctly, can be lifesavers. If you have something that itches and we can make the itch go away to help prevent the infection from you scratching, that's the goal. Topical steroids should not be used long-term and they are not solution. They merely treat the itch, which is the symptom, to calm down the inflammation temporarily. There's also different strengths and different classes of steroids. For milder eczema or eczema on younger patient or in delicate areas where skin is really thin, like the face, underarms groin, we pick hydrocortisone. For more generalized area, for mid to later adults, we can pick stronger, like mid potency or stronger steroid. And they're always to be used twice daily for two weeks only. You don't want to use steroids long-term. Long-term means anything longer than one week on the face or two weeks on the body because prolonged use of steroids can lead to thinning of the skin and formation of the stretch marks. But if you get off your steroid and you continue to flare, we have systemic agents. We also have non-steroidal topical inflammatories that are safe for long-term use. Okay, your step three in treating the eczema is to control the itch. The itch is going to lead to scratching, which is going to lead to more inflammation, potential infection, and boom, you've just flared your whole eczema. So sometimes we'll use nighttime histamines even or targeted anti-itch creams. Nighttime itch can particularly be severe for some of the eczema patients. Now, if you have sudden onset of itch that showed up like after travel and it's really intense at night, that could be scabies. So eczema is not to be confused with scabies. If you've never had eczema and you've traveled and you're suddenly itching at night only, that could be scabies. Make sure you see a derm to get that ruled out. But if you've had eczema, nighttime itch is actually pretty common. The antihistamines that have a side effect of drowsiness kind of help with the itch and help you sleep. You also want to be careful with which antihistamine you pick because here recently H1 antihistamines like Benadryl have been linked to potentially dementia and Alzheimer's in the future. So please discuss with your physician prior to doing this. For eczema that doesn't respond to topicals or covers a large body surface area, narrowband UVB phototherapy can be a good option. No, this doesn't mean you need to go to tanning bed. It means you should discuss this with your dermatologist. Cold compresses or soaking hands in cool water for about 10 to 15 minutes can also be beneficial. You can also use an ice pack if the itch is really intense because the coldness in the ice kind of numbs the nerves and you don't feel the itch. It works pretty quickly actually. Wet therapy is another way to control the itch and it's a really cool one. After applying a moisturizer or your medicated cream, you want to cover your hands with damp cotton gloves for about 20 to 30 minutes, which can boost absorption and hydration. And the step four in treating eczema is to address really severe those chronic cases. So if eczema is widespread or not responding to topical treatments, advanced medications can be life-changing. Changing. For moderate to severe eczema, there's so many newer medications that target that exact immune pathway driving the flares. So these are things like dipalimumab, tralokinumab, and JAK inhibitors. And if you're watching this, you're like, oh my gosh, she hasn't mentioned that I'm allergic to dairy and eliminating dairy is going to fix my eczema. Hear me out. The reason I didn't mention this is because let's say you're sensitive to dairy or allergic to dairy. Eliminating dairy, and I'm, this is a hypothetical, eliminating dairy does not make your eczema go away. You still have eczema. It just may minimize your flares. So it's important to make sure you have the right diagnosis and you can get proper treatment. The reason I mention this is because a lot of times I'll have parents bring in their newborns or their toddlers wanting to say, do I need to stop dairy? Do I need to stop gluten? And dairy and gluten are often targeted. And I understand that they're inflammatory for a lot of people. I completely understand that, but eliminating those things that are very nutritious and beneficial to the growing human body, especially in children like that, can be detrimental to their growth. And you are better off seeing a dermatologist first to get the right diagnosis, seeing the allergies to get the proper testing before you do trial elimination therapy to figure out what's wrong and maybe compromise nutrition of your child. And if you have eczema or you have one of these rashes and you're not sure when you need to see a dermatologist, here are some tips on when to see one. One, when your flares are too frequent. Next, if your rash is spreading, if it's been in one spot but now it's spreading everywhere or if it's getting worse. If the itching keeps you up at night, that's important. You're gonna scratch the living dickens out of your skin and you could even have scabies potentially. If you get recurrent skin infections, this can be very important. If you continue to scratch and you're not treating it, the infection can spread into your bloodstream. It's important to stop the itch scratch cycle. If you've done everything I've talked about, so far and nothing over the counter is working, that's another reason to see your dermatologist. Eczema is very manageable with the right plan and there's no need for you to suffer. 
through chronic itching or discomfort. Eczema is a chronic medical condition that affects millions of people. And while it can be incredibly frustrating, the good news is that we do have excellent treatments. In the next video, I'm going to walk you through dermatologist approved favorite products for eczema from cleansers to barrier repair creams to steroid alternative. So make sure you hit like, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Dr. Alexandra Brown. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.